So welcome to the Procida International Film Festival and the Procida Film Festival. This is Deborah Markowitz. She is a writer, director, producer, all of the above. And um, I want to welcome you to the show. And um, did you, I want to ask, did you film during the pandemic at all? Yeah, we did. We oh. shot about, um, I'm going to say one scene, which is about three to five minutes of the third episode of Couple of Guys, which is the series uh, that I'm working on. Um, we also shot a short film for somebody else, uh, for Frank Vespi, he wrote it, and I directed it called Fourth Row Center. Um, I know my, my business partner, her husband, John Marine, shot like five projects. Um, he shot a series, he was working on a feat, doing sound for a feature, he was working on tons of things. And um, what I found really helpful for me with all this time is I had like seven projects in post when this started and I have almost all of them out except for my feature, which I'm now in uh, the second pass of the post sound and um, the color grading and whatnot. So I got, Gem was, was still in post when we started, uh, Confidant was still in post. Um, I know that the first two episodes of Couple of Guys are now out of post. So yeah. um, they've been very busy and, and I just have gotten back to writing uh, or rewriting a feature for a production company that would, I'm in negotiations for them to basically, for, to shoot it. So, um, you know, so I've been busy. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that you work on so many different things at the same time. So tell me uh, and tell the people what it's like to be an ind independent filmmaker as a woman. Um, at, yeah, t we could add that in too. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Do you think that people take you se as seriously as a man in business? Uh, well, the, the interesting thing is when you're an independent filmmaker and you make your own work, nobody can fire you because you're the boss. You're making your own work. You put the deals together and the crew together to make this happen. Um, I don't feel that it's hurt me in the way that uh, people will come to me and offer me directing jobs and writing jobs. And, and um, uh, so, so the good thing is um, at this level, there's a lot of word of mouth. Uh, there's people who have seen my films at film festivals and that's where I get a lot of work. Um, it could be different if I, if I was more within the system, you know, if I was higher up in the studio system, maybe there would be a problem, but myself personally, I, I have not had an issue. So I've had to turn down so much work. Um, so it's, it's out there. The, this it's is out at there. the point where you are right now. At the beginning, was it like that? I'm sorry, what? At the beginning of your career, was it? No, yeah, well, I started um, doing casting for other people, and uh, that sort of almost had happened as an accident in a way. Somebody uh, came to me with a script. Uh, Peter Bonjourno was the director and had a script called My Cross to Bear, and he knew that I knew a certain actor, a certain celebrity, and he wanted to know if I could get him for the script. So I, I don't generally do that. I don't have time to read scripts, but I said, let me look at it. And I said, you, you have the wrong actor. I said, what do you mean? I said, because he's just not right for this. And I gave him all the reasons. And he, I said, what about this person, this person, and this person, some TV personalities that I know. And uh, he said, can you get them? I said, well, we could try. And um, I ended up uh, casting a couple of roles for him. And he asked me if I would be his casting director. And I'd never done it before, but I figured, okay, sure, why not? I'm not stupid, I could figure this out. Um, so I had done that and I become their casting director and not three weeks later, I get a call um, about a feature uh, that somebody was uh, producing and they needed another producer as well as a casting director. And I wasn't gonna do it, but I figured out of respect for the person who sent them my way, I started reading it and 10 pages in, I realized one of the best things I ever read. So I ended up uh, casting and producing a film called um, uh, Living with the Dead, A Love Story. It just kept taking off and then my phone, it, it, it was just crazy. My, you know, my emails, my, my husband said to me that um, you realize you turned down like a job a day. And, and, uh, and I was, you know. <laughs> so um, because time is so limited for me that I have to be very careful about the projects I take. If I have to, if I take it, it's because I really want it. I really want to do it. Um, so I, I, you know, sometimes when you're meant to do something, you, you almost don't even have a choice. People, people were basically contacting me out of nowhere, you know, to, to, to work on all these projects. So oh. I've written several features for other people. I've, 
um, polished shorts and features for people, um, directed, you know, for other people as well. And, and uh, but I have to keep a balance of wanting to do my own projects also. Um, so it's, it's been interesting, but um, I'm now at the point in my career where I'm focusing specifically on writing and, and some directing, but I, I, you know, that's where I want to be. Well, we all inspire to, <laughs> to be able to turn down work if we <laughs> at our choice. Um, so what would you say to people just starting off in the business of writing, directing, and mm -hmm. how they okay. go from the next level of either from writing or directing to getting their films out, uh, either through uh, festivals or getting distribution? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the first thing I'm going to say, if you're just starting out and you want to write, just write. Don't worry about the format. Don't worry about anything. Get it down because you can always fix it later. I wouldn't say that about filmmaking, but I find a couple of people whose work you respect who maybe owe you a favor or something and they're willing to really sit down and give you objective feedback. Um, it's hard to show it to your family because you're either going to get, oh, it's great when it sucks, or you're going to get it really sucks. Well, maybe it's really not bad. So family finds it very hard to be objective. Um, the story itself was true, but the person wanted to add these five things because he felt that it would make it a better story. And the, and the person, um, the, the producer who was very involved with the person who the story was about said, I didn't feel good about it either, but thank you for that. And, and whether they circle back or not, I feel good that I said the right thing and, and uh, you know, not just say, oh, it's great, it's great because I want the job. I, 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 when people do that to me, I, I just don't want them around because <laughs> I can't trust them, you know? And, and this business is just- oh, um, A lot about trust. <laughs> yeah, it's a business of illusion. So you have to know the people who are really gonna be there for you, exactly. you know, that, that you can that. trust their word. Yes. So that, that's a big- um, So I have uh, another question for you as a writer, how do you feel about writing and then handing over your child <laughs> that you just wrote, <laughs> your script child, mm -hmm. and giving it to a director for them to do what they would well, like? With. That, that's a rough one. Um, rough. I know. That's an interesting, because I was going through a circumstance <laughs> with a, a, a yeah. Christmas feature yeah. that I'm rewriting for a company now. Um, my first offer on that um, was somebody about, I'm going to say about a year ago, with, with the pandemic, it could have been two years ago, the time means nothing anymore, but um, he read the script, gave me three pages of notes, I love it, I love it, I love it, and then I'm reading through his notes, and while I'm not averse to, to changes, if they make sense, he wanted to change everything in it, but the characters' names, and the script, and I'm like, well, what did you like about this? And he said, well, we love you writing and we love this, but instead of being that, he's going to be this. And instead of that happening, this is going to happen. And I'm like, okay. I said, you know, I, I think that you really want a different script. I said, and I can write that for you, but I couldn't see in my mind trashing what I felt was a really good script because somebody liked the idea of it. So I said, I can write that for you. And then I still have this script in, in place. And now I have another company that's really up the stakes that wants the script. So um, they uh, gave me a couple of changes, uh, which are, are very simple and, and um, not necessarily simple, but it doesn't change the integrity of the story. And, and I'm doing that. And then I'm going to uh, send it to uh, the uh, producer. And I don't know if I'm directing this yet, um, but I'm going to send it to the producer and say, look, I think we can cut out all of you. Tell me not to change anything. But if you want a tighter script, I would recommend taking out these, you know, these 10 things if you want it. If not, you can have a longer film and then we'll negotiate on, on what's happening. Am I going to direct it? I mean, I'm going to remain as a producer. I don't know, <laughs> but I would want to, if, it's, if I'm not directing it, I want to know who the director is and, and I want to make sure that they do good work. Um, I am not married to this one as much as I am some of my other uh, projects. So um, I do want to, I mean, my, I love directing, um, but writing is really kind of, if I had to give up anything, it could never be writing. So um, that's what I want to concentrate on. And I do understand some of these projects are, are so expensive that um, they're going to want a name produce a, a name writer on it. Um, not a name writer, I'm sorry, a name director on it. So I, I'm just, if I want it done, that's what I've got to do. 
Uh, so yeah, so I'll find out about that. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll find out if yes. um, how they interpret it and. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a tough one for me. You know the experience I had. Uh, mm -hmm. But every, I guess everybody has that kind of um, experience as a writer. I mean, I just can't see as an artist taking your creation and, and just mangling it. <laughs> well, so you it, have to really I mean, I actually did that for, for a horror feature that I wrote, but somebody paid me to write it based on a true story. Oh. And um, but he had like eight pages of, of eight, or eight scenes that he wanted in there. I said, OK, so you need me to create this story around the, you know, these eight things that oh, happen. I said, add eight. Yeah, so, so I said, how I write is, um, you gotta let me just go for it. And afterwards, then you, you know, if you wanna make some changes, that's fine. And I don't, but you can't make 5 million changes. You can't say, well, he had a blue car, I really want a red car. Things that don't make sense. Life yeah. is too short for that. But if, you know, but let me finish writing. And he read it and said, I love this. Oh. He said, the only thing I'd like is these two things. I said, that's fine, no problem. And I rewrote it. And he's pitching it. He's trying to get funding for it. I don't know if I'm directing it. I'm assuming I'm not directing it. Um, and I don't care. I got paid work for hire. This oh. is his project. So I, I hope that it, it you know, works out well for him and, and whatnot. So I've written for other people knowing that's their work. All and right. then whatever, you know, whatever happens there. If you go My into stories, it, it depends on the story. It depends yeah. on how, how close I am to it and, and how capable I feel of doing it, you know. Yes, so. I got you. Well, anything else that you would like to tell independent filmmakers, some uh, words of wisdom, some advice? Yeah, I mean, if you want to do it, just do it. It's inexpensive enough now to, to be able to play with things. Um, and, and, and really one of my biggest uh, pieces of advice is this is work. This is, it's great when you're on set, it can seem like a lot of fun when you're on set with your friends and, and it is, but it's a lot of work with friends and you have to hire the right people. And even if somebody's your closest friend, if they can't do the job, you, you gotta let them go. It's, 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 it's difficult. Um, I've had to do it. I've had to, um, sometimes not necessarily friends, but somebody you hire that you work with that was phenomenal for one project but the new project, it's just not a fit, you know? And then it's a, a difficult talk you have to, to have to have. So you have to decide what you want. Do you just want to make movies because it's fun and you don't really care if they're good? Do you want to get better all the time? Um, do you want to take, is this a hobby or is it a profession? Um, and then you, you have to be very careful about the people you work with. We're all going to make mistakes. Um, I'm going to say I make very few because when I find somebody I work with very well and I'm happy with their work, 98% of the time it works out. So, you know, it's, I see this happen a lot where people have their crew, you know, they have their crew that, that they work with whenever they're available all at the same time because it's people they can trust. And that's very important. That's very so. important and, and uh, very, very important uh, mm -hmm. to have this camaraderie of people mm -hmm. that work together and um, that, that show up for you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's really important. And um, yeah, there's this other part of it. Are you, do you want to make this project just to sell it? Or do you want, or do you see a more of a future in it? Mm -hmm. Right. So, I, I mean, I, I guess it, it, it's your intention, whatever your intention is. Yeah. 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 You have to know what it company? is. Isn't that the name of your production company? It's intention films and media. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I wanted everything that I did to have some sort of message. And in fact, if you go to intention films and media .com, um, and, and even things like um, The Last Taxi Driver, um, which was my first film that I directed and wrote, uh, starring Robert Cohesi from Blue Bloods. Uh, and um, it, it's, it's, he's almost a hero in a way. He's just this ridiculous taxi cab driver who doesn't want to give up his taxi. Uh, his taxi license, even though it's after the apocalypse and almost everybody who um, is left are zombies and a few crazy humans. Um, but in a way, he's a hero because he, he even says in there, I'm not giving up my license just because they're out here. And if they think I am, they got another thing coming. So he's somebody who, no matter what, is going to do what he is here to do. And it's, we all need a hero like that, that crazy person. Um, you know, and then there's um, By Blood, which is about when you let your ego, um, you know, um, and, and greed and, and, and want for something uh, or someone can really destroy your entire life, 
you know, and then leaving, which, which is just about letting go. You know, there's everything has a story to it, and that's what's important to me. Um, so it's you look at things that are more commercial. Um, the, the one that I'm talking about selling right now, um, that was written just as part of a contest, and then it just got bigger. It was written at a short novella, and I went, you know, this is actually pretty good. And so then I wrote it as, as a much larger thing. And I always said that I would like to direct this, but I'm not married to this one. You know, somebody else can, somebody else can do a great job with this. I'll be very happy to go to the movies and see it. <laughs> so, so it, you know, depends. Each project has its own intention. Let's take one of your films mm -hmm. um, that you're creating. Hopefully one will be, or a few. You have so many projects going on. Let's bring it to the Prochita Festival for next year, because it is mm -hmm. a feature. It's a feature festival, too. And um, <clears throat> maybe we could get you there. Yeah? <laughs> that could happen. Who knows next year? <laughs> we don't know what's going on from one day to the next. But yes. like, oh, and and uh, you you're Italian, aren't you? Even though you have a Markowitz last name, aren't you Italian? Oh yeah, my well, my father's last name was Markowitz. My oh. mother has a very oh. elaborate, oh. like three-syllable yeah. name that's a Francesca Giosambina Mariana, and then we go on from there. <laughs> so yes, I I am half Italian, and um, what part? my 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 grandmother Francesca and my grandfather Pasquale, and. Um, yeah, so I've, I've got those parts. Part Everything except the cooking. Part of Italy? Uh, they are from Calabria. Oh, Calabria. Okay. Yeah, they were both from Calabria. Ah. Well, this is in Procida. It's off of the, the Naples uh, coast by Ischia. And um, it's an absolutely beautiful island. I was there last year and supposed to be there for my first, <laughs> my first directorial. But is always next year and um hopefully i could get um, a plane full of people over <laughs> so deborah i want to thank you i know you're off to shoot a film today which mm -hmm. i'm so happy that you're working and and things are going well and uh, stay safe and i really appreciate you um doing this and thank you for having me and um great luck with the film festival thank you so much